Hey everyone, this is Chuck Shembry with Understanding Ag. I'm here in the Burroughs family farm, Almond Orchard in Denaire, California. And we're gonna do a little orchard walk and talk right now. And in particular, we got a perfect opportunity today to talk about grazing and cover crop management strategies around grazing um, and understanding you know, how to manage these covers to further build soil health and how little decisions uh, go a long way. So I'm gonna flip the camera around here and we can see what we're gonna look at is an orchard block here that has not been grazed yet, has a lot of forage, a lot of biomass. And at first look, when you're in an orchard or even a pasture like this, it looks like tremendous ground cover. Um, and there is a lot of biomass here, but this orchard, all the covers in the middle have to be terminated uh, going into harvest to, uh, they have some alternative harvesting techniques in this orchard where they actually catch the nuts and then lay them down in a windrow, but they still need to terminate a lot of these middle ground cover. Uh, so when we get down in, when you're observing how much forage you want to utilize or how far down you want to graze, and we can apply this to mowing, we really have to understand what is the residues that we have out in the uh, in the field. So when we're looking at residues, we need to get down inside this cover. Hopefully you guys can see this. And you're gonna pull everything back and you can see, although the covers look real dense, it's really easy just to push them back and, and get to some exposed soil. So right here, we're straight down to the mineral soil. There's not a lot of residues built up here, which um, which we would which we would assume because of the termination of the covers and in summer things oxidize and and uh, you know the ground is and sometimes it's it's somewhat bare so it is incredible that they get this cover to grow this is actually a lot of latent seed and just natural veg that comes in there's quite a diversity in here and you can see like a fava bean there where they've seeded. Um, there's some cover crops that have been seeded in here as well, but the majority of what you're looking at is the late seed bank. If we come over to the tree row area where they do allow vegetation to maintain through the summertime, there's a bit more residues we can get down to. Even as you start getting down and pushing it away, there's a lot of, a lot more decomposing material we'll see. And as we start getting to the mineral soil portion there's some residues building up here um, it's it's darker there's more organic material that's uh you know decomposing over time and actually i believe compost has been applied out here but just walking six feet over we do have more residues not by a lot but we do have more residues in here so when we're determining how much to graze we have to consider our goals of building as many residues in the understory of these forages as we can because these residues are particulate organic matter. They're going to add carbon to the system and they're going to help build that aggregate, feed the soil microbes, and cycle nutrients. More importantly, we're really getting nutrient cycling um, in these soils, rocking and rolling, by making sure we have a continuous flow of decomposing organic material, which we can do that through building more residues. And with the livestock, we can take this forage or cover crops and we can return them back to the soil in a different form of nutrients, which is the manure and urine. So I've just walked across to the next block where they just grazed. So I'm going to firmer again. And in fact, let me do a, let me turn here and uh, make this much more easy to understand and observe. Here is before grazed. Here is after grazed. What is going on here is grazing, this graze was fairly quick. Uh, the goal was to not take off too much biomass and to get a good trample effect so that we can lay down this material. It's being smashed down by the sheep. Forgot to mention they're running 600 head of Katahdin. 
And as we look across this orchard, there's substantial biomass still left. In a typical grazing situation, this would have been grazed all the way down so that, uh, you know, all the covers or forage are utilized as feed. But then we don't get good regrowth. So it's very important to not overgraze. Um, and we can determine this by estimating our dry matter forage. In this particular circumstance, that did not happen and observations were made. The observation was to not allow these covers to be grazed too low. It looks like they were grazed around, well, probably even less than 50%, 40% or so was grazed down. And there is a nice trample effect. There's a lot of foxtail in here that the sheep did not feed on, which is okay. If they were left in here too long, they would have selectively grazed, leaving more foxtail and much more bare area. So it is the end of March and we're not even at peak photosynthetic period in California. So these are all going to be able to regrow, continue pumping carbon into the soil and building the aggregate. That is what this is all about, building deep aggregation into the soil. And we do that by making sure that we optimize photosynthesis on the land. <clears throat> and they're going to improve and increase the productivity of their forage out here and the forage quality over time as we build the aggregate, increase nutrient cycling. So again, we'll look at this one more time just to give everyone an idea. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why aren't we leaving a lot of feed behind? No, we are not. In the long term, we are going to build more biomass. This has been a pretty good rain year, but even in a poor rain year and a drought year, we could still produce a similar type of biomass and in a good rain year, much more biomass. So they've done a good job out here there's really no bare ground, everything that's getting smashed down. You can see this was probably somewhat of a bare area. Things, residues are being smashed in. And that's building armor. So we're building armor in these soils. Next, we'll take a look and uh, put the shovel to the ground here and uh, discuss soil aggregation. So I'm going to dig some, uh, some nice size 8 to 10 inch uh, clods and uh, from the cover crop middle and in the tree row here, just right next to each other. Let's do some observations because the ground cover throughout the year is different. Like I said, the tree row has a lot of ground cover throughout the, the season that's maintained. There's no strip spraying. There's some mowing that happens and here in the covers often have to be terminated for, for the nut harvest. So let's check this out. I like to dig a hole and then take a piece off the wall and try to maintain everything. It's already falling apart on me. Let me do that again. So it's probably a little challenging to see in video, but we're looking for the depth of aggregation and the aggregate look that we're, that we're looking to observe is a cottage cheese, crumbly chocolate cake look. Um, I'm not going to get into how aggregation forms, but we can put a link for you to read more about it. But in this particular soil here, you can almost see the plane of aggregation. I didn't create this, I just scooped this right out. But a lot of this, below this layer here, which is at max three inches, we're getting into a soil that's got fairly poor soil structure. And we don't see a lot of roots in here. The majority of the roots are up here in this three inch. And that's because the cover crop middles are not allowed to have uh, persistent biomass and cover throughout the, um, throughout the year. So every time we terminate and cut these cover crops all the way low, the root systems 
uh, no longer grow and push into the deep subsoil, building that aggregate and forming uh, deep, healthy rhizosheets. I've also seen this in orchards and vineyards that do not graze, or, or sorry, uh, yeah, do not graze and also do not obviously harvest off the ground. And they'll mow so early in the year, before the covers reach a really good biomass and reach their full maximum photosynthetic potential, and maybe they're not senescing, adding more seed. So we'll see this shallow aggregated layer and below it, it's, it's somewhat compacted. Here's another look at that soil. Most of the root system in the top in the top three inches. I, there is roots getting down in here. I mean, I can pull this apart and look, we're gonna see roots. But it's not dense. And we want that root system to be much more dense, creating the deep aggregation. This is how we improve our water infiltration and the farm water cycle. So let's take a look at the uh, tree row. Okay, now I'm in the tree row. As you can see, there's a tree. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and dig here, get us another uh, sample to, uh, let's take a look at this aggregation. And I actually haven't done a whole lot of this today. Um, so we'll see, see what happens. Oh, the shovel just slipped right in. And that's an indication too of your, your aggregation and the reduced compaction. Obviously these tree rows are managed differently, but this is just a good way to illustrate how soil management and the decisions we make make a huge difference on our nutrient cycling, our water infiltration. Most of the orchards in this region are strip spraying, leaving complete bare ground in the tree row which often the tree rows have worse soil aggregation and worse soil health. So let's see here. All right, so this is completely unfiltered, meaning I'm not trying to stage anything here. Let's take a look. Break this apart. Now you can see this crumbly look all the way down root system's not too dense which is a little surprising i might have just stuck the shovel in an area that didn't have a whole lot of density of grasses but they certain as i brush this away which is very easy compared to the other soil you can see these root systems persisting down here and there's a nice crumbly granular crumbly structure and it was so easy for me to stick the shovel in. The, it's darker here. We don't see this definitive plane that we saw in the other soil. So we know we, we're gonna pull some soil data on this. It'll be interesting to look at. But just using our observations, we can determine that our soil is improving or it needs to improve just by looking at the soil aggregation the rooting depths. We can look at the rhizo sheaths and see if they're producing good exudates. It's not tremendous right now. This is in the shade and it'll pick up, but you can see this, these uh, particles that are gluing to the root system, creating great mycorrhizal and other microbial associations in the root zone. And there's still a nice Nice density of roots. That's that's at least a foot down there. All right, so I got these two soils next to each other. I'm calling them like as if they're different soils, but again, it's tree row, there's the pit, cover crop. Just different management. Of course, we understand that the way the covers have to be managed here has to be different because of harvest, and this is some of the best example of good soil and cover crop management in probably a, a California almond orchard that I've seen or any nut crop that's harvesting off the ground. So let's do some more observations here real quick. Much darker, they did apply compost in the tree row, so we need everything within context, but it wasn't a lot of compost, so it's really not gonna make a massive difference. The majority of organic matter is is built in the soil through root excavates, microbial activity, and 
the decomposition and incorporation of residues. Um, we can see a definitive uh, line here of this aggregation for this soil. As I do this with my knife, we're just kind of popping up these, these um, non-aggregated clods that are essentially will just disperse and break apart in water and they're also uh, reducing water infiltration. Over here, and a lot of the orchard is, is like this because they keep a pretty nice wide managed strip that's not sprayed, of course. As I do this in here, everything kind of crumbles apart. Yeah, there's a little bit of maybe unconsolidated material here, but we don't have a definitive, we don't have a definitive line of complete reduced aggregation. This is just a lot of organic matter at the topsoil. And of course it's gonna reduce, the carbon's gonna reduce as we get lower in this profile and this soil type and we start getting down into you can see as the color change into a different you know type of uh, uh, subsoil horizon but even then all these root systems here have actually created quite quite nice aggregation pretty deep into this soil so those are the difference between two soils that are right next to each other in the same orchard and unfortunately many orchards look like this and actually worse. In most cases, I don't even see a lot of this aggregation in most orchards that are under heavy tillage or in a nut crop, and the topsoil looks much more like we see here. Well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion today. As you might have noticed, we didn't talk a lot about soil health testing. We didn't dive into the science. This is all about observation. This is all about management, and in my mind, oops, got some soil in my mouth. That's part of the job. In my mind, it's a craft. And we use science to, as a tool. Uh, understanding ag, we do soil health analysis with Haney, PLFA, wet aggregate stability. We do water infiltration tests. We, we get data. But ultimately, we use our eyes, we use our observations to manage for soil health. And it really is all about building healthy and productive biomass and managing it the right way. So if we just put a cover crop out there, mow it too early, and then we expose bare ground, the soil heats up, that starts destroying the soil microbial life, etc., and the negative cascading effects occur and soil continues to degrade even without tillage. Um, so the lesson here today is how managing for optimizing your cover crop biomass with intention and allowing enough above ground biomass to be photosynthesizing and also using livestock to cycle nutrients and also trample material to add more carbon in a different form into the soil. Um, you could do this by roller crimping if you don't have livestock and you can do it with mowing at the right time. If you don't have a roller crimper, roller crimpers are very inexpensive. So if you have any questions about this, please reach out to us, um, leave a comment, and um, you know, we'd be happy to help and, and assist. Take care, everyone.